Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Roger Scott on the line, and he's Chief Trading Strategist of WealthPress. Roger, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here today. All right, Roger. So uh, excited to get into today's topic. So we'll be talking about wealth press and, and some of the strategies and what you're doing to help your members. Um, and just to get us kicked off, we'll start with our Mission Matters Minute. So Roger, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. So that's our mission here. Roger, what mission matters to you? My mission is is really, really simple, but at the same time, very powerful. I want to teach as many everyday people how to become better traders and investors in this complicated market that we're in right now. That really is what it comes down to. I want to give them the skills that they need to be able to take their trading to the next level and finally understand what it really takes to win in the market environment. That's awesome. And love bringing mission-based uh, entrepreneurs and executives on the line to really share why they do what they do. Um, so definitely want to go further into how you're helping your members. But just to get us kicked off, like, like how did you get started on this path really to helping investors? That's a really, it's a great question. You know, I was, I was planning on actually, it's one of those things where I, I kind of wound up in this, in this spot and then kind of looked back and said, how, how did I get here? Uh, but the truth of the matter is I originally, I started trading 27 and a half years ago in January, it'll be 28 years. So yeah. it's been, you know, it's been quite some time, but uh, I originally got interested. A friend of mine started telling me about the stock market a few weeks before I applied to law school. Mm -hmm. And as I was applying to law school, it's a process. It's a several month process as I was applying and as I was accepted. So here, here I was going on the, on the, on the path of, of going into law and being a lawyer. And the next thing you know, I fall in love with the market. Mm -hmm. So I, I did finish law school. I did, I, if I start something, I'll finish it. I enjoyed it very, very much. But I could tell you that I knew from the moment I started trading, that, that was going to be that. Shortly after law school, I, I worked for a brokerage firm. Then I got a job uh, at another brokerage firm. I started my own brokerage firm. And little by little, I started a hedge fund. And the rest is history, as they say. But uh, it was a very natural progression that took many, many years. And um, it was really great because when I started, which was early to mid 90s, that's yeah. when the Internet, the algorithms, all of these things began. So I, I was able to get in on that on the ground floor, uh, the back testing, the using uh, using options. So I was into the swing trading aspect of it right when swing trade swing trading began. So the timing actually couldn't have been better because I think if it was about 10 years earlier, yeah. It would have been too boring for me, you know. I mean, calling, go, calling your broker, paying three hundred dollars—that wouldn't have worked. And I probably yeah. would have ended up being into more into the futures market, which is actually kind of where I went as well. So, so, but, but the point of the matter is, I was planning on becoming a lawyer, and mm -hmm. the market bug bit me. And, and I don't—I mean, honestly, I was—I was spending more time researching the market than I was law in law school, and I never practiced. Mm -hmm. So, it was just one of those things. It's nice to have. It teaches you how to think right, but. Um, be careful if you're planning on being a lawyer because you may end up being a stock trader. <laughs> Got it. All right. And, and I think it's funny how you say, you don't know how you ended up here. I mean, I've done thousands of interviews. And when I talk to people all the time, I'm like, well, if I would have told you that I was going to be a podcaster when I was in school, probably wasn't the case because uh, I don't know if it existed back then. Right, right, right. right. So right. we'll, we'll spend most of this interview, of course, talking about the strategies and how you're helping your members. But I'd like to take a step back for a moment. I know there's going to be some people that watch this interview that are maybe a little bit earlier in their career. Maybe they're just graduating college or they're just kind of getting started. Um, what kind of advice would you give to them? Because you had a big pivot and that happened because of your interest. Maybe some people out there that are watching this right now are having a big pivot or some big changes in terms of thought process because of what's going on in the world or some things that are even out of their control. Um, what kind of things would you tell those people that are watching this? That's actually a really, really good question, Adam, because I wish I could I can kind of go back in time and and tell myself a few things. It was kind of I, when you were talking, I was I was I was reminded by that scene from Back to the Future where Biff goes and gives him that book and says, <laughs> "Here, you need to have this book. This is your future." 
Yeah, I, I wish I could do that. But all jokes aside, if I was starting out right now, and if I was to have someone like me come to them, I would say a few very, very important things. Get rid of that shiny light syndrome. There's, there's a lot of shiny lights and very shiny objects out there right now in the, in the investment world. Focus mm -hmm. on things that work and work consistently because there's always going to be something new, something exciting and something interesting. I would tell the younger me to learn the things that matter. For example, I would tell the traders out there that are just starting out to focus yeah. on positive expectancy. Um, a lot of traders don't even know what that means, but positive expectancy is, it's, it's how Las Vegas was built. It's basically, you have to have a certain edge and uh, that's what a positive expectancy is. And in order to develop that edge, you need to start really testing platforms. So mm -hmm. if I was starting out, if I was to give advice to someone starting out, I would tell them, learn very, very basic algorithm, mm -hmm. uh, algorithmic samples and learn to program strategies so you know what the edge is before you risk your hard-earned money. Uh, doing that can really change how you think about investments, and it, and it can make you understand that what you thought worked doesn't work, or what you, yeah. you thought never worked actually worked, and we have the tools to do that. Back then, it was very complicated. Uh, I used to, I remember, I used to, uh, you know, back in the mid-90s, we had dial-up mm -hmm. internet. I used to set up my trade station, and it would take 24 hours for it to process wow. everything. So it would literally be from the time the market opens to the next day market opens. And that's when I, it was, it was a disaster. Now yeah. you could do that with the press of a button and, and get all, get that data within seconds. So mm -hmm. uh, the timing has changed. The, the tools have changed. It's much easier. The markets have not changed, mm -hmm. but the tools to analyze the markets for the everyday trader and investors, they've gotten so much easier. So you, it's, it's actually a lot mm -hmm. easier to find an edge if you're starting now than it was 25, 30 years ago uh, because of the technology that's available. Yeah. And if you go further back than that, you're looking at like some of the people watching this right now are like, what? I used to have to do some paper and we had to do this and we had to reconcile. And like, if you go further back, it gets even scarier. So I, I have to have one of those, these kids these days moments, right? And they're fancy yeah, it, tools, but it just I makes hate. it so much more, so much more data they can access. <laughs> the generation before me had to do a moving average calculation by taking the, the Wall Street Journal at night and doing it manually. Can you imagine that? I mean, I can't. I've heard of this. Was, yeah, I can't. yeah, that was that was less than six, seven years before I started. I mean, we're talking like 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 Stone Age, you know, so <laughs> so and now I mean, you the programs, the algorithms, the help you can get online. It's mm -hmm. it's it would be behoovious of people not to take advantage of it right now in this day and age. So I know one of the things that you specialize in over at Wealth Press and that you help your members with is, is a concept called swing trading. So not everybody right. that's watching this is familiar with that and specifically short and medium term trends. So maybe just to start the dialogue, maybe give us a little bit of a, a definition of what that means. Swing trading is taking advantage of short term uh, market or price swings in stocks that last anywhere from three to three days to three weeks, give or take. Yeah. Uh, basically, we're trading the, the, every stock, every asset, every tradable asset has two trends. It has a long-term trend and it has a short-term trend. Mm -hmm. What we're doing in this case is, is trading the short-term trend, whereas position traders or investors would take advantage of the long-term trend. So we're not focused on fluctuations that take, take, take place over a period of a year. We care about fluctuations that take place in a period of a month. Because in my opinion, and based on backtesting, there's a lot less random activity that mm -hmm. happens in, in the last five, 10 days than it happens over the last five, 10 years. Yeah. So it's a lot easier to gauge uh, an edge if you're looking at the short term versus mm -hmm. the long term based on my findings from looking at algorithmic systems. And so just to, I guess, juxtapose this or to compare, so maybe compare it to what a day trading and, and you also mentioned, you know, long-term investors. So just to give the audience a, a something to compare it to, because I'm sure they've heard of those two things, but I feel like swing trading specifically, that niche doesn't get as much um, press. Right. And I think you're going to see more of it because of the popularity of options and uh, options yeah, tend yeah. to work best with swing trading. But, but yeah, it's a good point. Day trading is simple. It's when you enter and exit a position within the same trading session. And quite honestly, you can argue and say, well, if you're getting more data to use for an edge in, in a short-term time frame, then wouldn't day trading give you even more data? 
Yeah. And yeah. yes, day trading, there's not all day trading is random and we can't pick out trends within a day. But here's the problem, Adam. The problem with day trading is you don't have enough time for your position to make money. It's not enough time for your profits to develop because you're only giving yourself a six and a half hours within the trade. Yeah. So yeah. You, your accuracy has to be astronomical. And I'm not 100% positive that there's enough non-random trading events mm -hmm. that happen within a six and a half hour period. So in my personal experience, day trading is, is, is not the best way to utilize your time. With that said, I know several guys who are really good at it, but yeah. it's just not something I've ever been able to, uh, it's never been for me. And one of the reasons is because I don't wanna sit there and, and do this and watch the market <laughs> six and a half hours. It's like watching Twilight Zone after yeah. a while, you know? Um, so, so that's day trading. Day trading is very short term. It's either scalping, meaning getting in and out mm -hmm. right away. And that's how floor traders traded back in the day. Um, mm -hmm. And they made money, but it was easier because they had no commission and they were right there in the pit. But to do that from your computer when you're competing against hundreds of thousands of other guys doing the same thing, it can get a little competitive to yeah. lack of yeah. a better term. Position trading or, or holding positions or investing position trading, uh, it, those are all very similar concepts. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much for any time you hold a position for an extended period of time. Anything over a quarter, I would I would say is position trading or uh, investing, anything mm -hmm. over a quarter. And that's when you would look at the major trend and you would avoid the, 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 the ebb and flows of the market, if you will. So each is very different, but I find that with options, uh, because options have, options are an expiring asset. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, it's like holding an, a piece of ice in your hand, the, the, yeah. decay, the value decays. I find that positions that last anywhere from a few days to a few weeks tend to to work really well with options, and and they do well with that type of time frame. They ma swing trading and options they kind of go go together very very well naturally. Yeah, I think that's a good transition too. So uh, into the next part of this, which is okay. So now we've defined the different types of training, you know, broadly speaking. Um, so now um, you mentioned options or stock options. I believe more than once at this point. So. Um, let's maybe go a little bit further and get into what types of um, types of markets can be traded um, and that and number one and then number two, like why you you mentioned stock options. Um, but let's go a little bit further into why that's a good um, possible um, vehicle to do your trading through. And that's another very good question. And it's, the answer is actually not that simple. It's a really good answer. And I think it's something your readers would actually learn and benefit from understanding yeah. back in the yeah. day, ba back in the day. Uh, when I say back in the day, I like I, these I, back in the day. T back in the you day, know I'm a sucker yeah, for it. Way yeah. back when. Back in the day when I was five years old. No, but, but seriously, <laughs> back in the day when I was starting out, you we didn't have ETFs. We did not have exchange traded funds. Um, and now if you look at, for example, the two most liquid assets mm -hmm. in, in stocks, the spider and the diamond, they're both mm -hmm. ETFs. So for those, for folks at home who don't know what ETFs are, ETFs are exchange traded funds. And it's mm -hmm. when you, basically take a mutual fund and trade it like a stock when you can trade it in and out of it and it's very volatile. And, and the spider, the S&P 500, uh, ticker symbol SPY happens to be the most liquid ETF, more liquid than any stock actually, substantially more liquid. So over the last 20, 30 years, ETFs have, have become very, very big. And why are they so important? Well, the reason they're so important is because back in the day, again, as I say it, if you wanted to trade corn, for example, if you wanted to trade the euro dollar, if you wanted to trade the bond, you would have to open up a brokerage account at a futures brokerage firm. So yeah. stocks would be under one broker and futures would be under one uh, under another broker. And futures and stocks, they have different margins. They have different contract sizes. They're not standardized like stocks. So yeah. it was very difficult for somebody who was a stock trader to kind of just jump into commodities trading. It wasn't the mm -hmm. same. It's kind of like a stock trader now trying to jump into cryptos. If you, yeah. for, it's actually very similar if you kind of compared that now to how it was back in the day. So it was very apples and oranges. It wasn't like going to Fidelity or Charles Schwab. It was like, oh, this is different. I have to put my money in Coinbase and then I have mm -hmm. to, it's very, it was very different. What ETFs did was they were able to bridge the gap between commodities and stocks. Mm -hmm. Basically, an ETF is a commodity that trades as a stock 
with a stockbroker. So if I want to trade corn right now, there's actually an ETF with a ticker C O R N corn mm -hmm. that you could trade instead of corn. So now there's an and these ETFs became so darn popular over the mm -hmm. last 20 years that I'm 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 gonna guess. I'm I don't know for sure, but I would imagine there's probably as many ETFs as there are individual stocks. Yeah. And, and and you know, there's an ETF for everything. There's an ETF for currencies, there's an ETF for commodities, there's an ETF mm -hmm. for uh, cryptocurrencies. Yeah. Uh, as, as of a few days ago, there's an ETF for everything. I mean, and they're mm -hmm. being and they're coming out with more and more e every single day. It, it's gotten to a point, uh, Adam, where if I want to show and I do videos every day, if I want to mm -hmm. show somebody a bond, I don't use the 10 year or the 30 year bond. I use the yeah. TLT ETF. Yep. If I want to show somebody the spider, I don't go to the OEX S&P 100. Mm -hmm. I just look at the spy. So yeah. I'm even demonstrating overall markets, not even using indexes anymore. I'm just using mm -hmm. ETFs for all of it. So yeah. they've really become very, very, it's gotten to a point where I talk about ETFs to some of my clients or on broadcast, people don't even ask me what ETFs are anymore. Yeah, for so, sure. So how does that, I had to kind of take a long way to answer mm -hmm. the question, but, but this is very important because these ETFs are all optionable and they mm -hmm. all trade like stocks, right? With a stockbroker. So yeah. if I tell you if I tell you that there's a hot trend in corn right now, or if I tell you that there's a hot trend in Microsoft, mm -hmm. looking at a chart and going to a, a stockbroker and placing a trade is completely the same now. So not only have options become more popular for stocks under uh, everyday the volume liquidity for options, but now you're able to take advantage of ETFs with options as well. Mm -hmm. So so the option market has has the stock option market has become extremely big because these ETFs have pretty much replaced for the most part mm -hmm. ordinary commodities and futures and tr everyday stock tr you know stock traders <laughs> can now use mm -hmm. these ETFs and options to trade commodities and currencies and futures as well mm -hmm. so so not only has the stock option uh, liquidity mm -hmm. become very very popular and and options, uh, everyday traders are now trading options on stocks. They're yeah. also incorporating these ETF options as well. So, so, so options have become really, really popular for many, many reasons because the because everyday traders who are now swing trading, they realize, hey, mm -hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to hold this position for two years. Why would I spend two thousand dollars on an Amazon stock where I could? Spend I could buy an Amazon option for $20 yeah. and have that same type of, of risk to reward ratio that I had before. And, and they're saying, hey, wait a minute, why do I need to open up an, uh, an account at a brokerage firm, at a commodity brokerage firm to do a pork belly trade if I could just do ETF with my stockbroker and my margin can be cross collateralized, mm -hmm. you know, with, with it, you, you couldn't do that. So, so. So stock options now have become so flexible because you could trade ETF options with it. You can use the, the profits from those options to gain an advantage in your existing positions. Because imagine, imagine go, I've had this happen. Yeah. Imagine you have two accounts, right? You have a corn account and you have a, a stock account and your corn account is making you millions and your, your stock account is going down yeah. because commodities rise when stocks go down. And your margin clerk at your stock broker is saying, hey, can you wire this? Uh, you have a margin call. And you're like, no, I don't. I'm making millions in my other broker. And you're and yeah. he's like, where, what? Who's this other? Bro now it's all under the same roof. So right. you've got one margin clerk margin, looking at both of your positions. You don't have to get cut out of your position unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. So stock options are a lot bigger and more powerful now, not because of just the liquidity and what you can mm -hmm. do but also the assets that you're able to trade with it mm. via these ETFs. So it's kind of like everything came together at one time and mm -hmm. all of these guys and gals trading commodity options said, the hell with it. I'm going to, I'm going to trade all of this in my stock account and they've switched to ETFs. So, so you've got a, you've got mm -hmm. stock options becoming more popular. And at the same time, you've got the ETF options adding to the mix. And again, they're offering you a lot more bang for the buck for a lot less cost. Yeah, the, the vehicles to be able to trade in, um, the access to the market, the, the costs being driven down have just, I mean, there's so many advances that you just mentioned that, um, that have been all in really the investors' um, favor.
throughout the years. A lot of these right. things that you're talking about stripped out a lot of different costs, a lot of different transaction fees, even just the efficiency of the market now on these ETFs from where they started versus now where they're at, especially some of the larger ones. Like there used to be a difference there. Now it's so it's it's negligible like there's nothing no not, it's almost like one to one almost obviously there's you know a decimal there but it's just it's just continued to progress along with the liquidity and everything else so i think it's an exciting time um i want to before we go further because i do want to talk a little bit more about the strategy and, and other things that you're doing but i guess um before we do that roger let's um pause for a moment and tell me a little bit more about wealth press and uh, and why you started that company well, I started Wealth Press with uh, with actually it's not just me, it's two other guys, but uh, it's three guys, and we've all been in the financial uh, financial industry in one aspect or another for over twenty years, I, yeah. I could say. So we've all have a lot of experience. But quite honestly, the reason I started Wealth Press was so that I saw every day when I would be reading the newspapers, when I would be getting emails, I saw that there was a major, major disconnect between the everyday person and financial mm -hmm. analysis. Uh, either it was inaccessible, either people were just not being told complete information, or people did not get any sort of an edge. It was basically very, very broad information, kind of like uh, invest in blue chip stocks or, yeah. or, or yeah, buy uh, mm -hmm. the, the top. Th there was very little, th there was a big disconnect between what and how. Mm -hmm. And and I thought it was it would be really great to to take these people by the hand and first mm -hmm. of all, explain to them that a 50 or 60 or 70% of what you believe makes money does not work yeah. and it has yeah. never worked. And you're kind of bumping against a road or you're, go you're driving down a road that's not gonna yield you anything favorable. And it's yeah. not just my opinion, it's based on 50 years of back testing the markets. Um, and, and I'm gonna tell you, when you back test the markets every day for hours and hours, mm -hmm. you know exactly what works and what doesn't over time. Mm -hmm. And you see people making consistent mistakes over and over and they're expect it's, it's like, it's like doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, for example, uh, just to, just to give you a real simple example. Okay. Let, let me give you a real great example. Mm -hmm. You've heard of, you've heard of the stochastics indicator, right? RSI. Yes. Okay. Now these are very common indicators that are available in every, uh, brokerage platform mm -hmm. in the world, right? I mean, there's an RSI and a stochastics in every stock broker's platform. Mm -hmm. well, well, if you look carefully, look at when those indicators were created. They were created in the 70s. Yeah. Now I'm gonna ask you a question. Do you think anybody was swing trading stocks in the mid 70s, when before, no. 20 years before the internet was created? No, no. So why, okay, so why are those indicators there? Mm. Why? And, and if they're there, obviously the retail trader is going to assume that it works. Why else wouldn't it be there? Obviously the guy that the brokerage firm that gave me this system obviously mm -hmm. knows better than me. And obviously if it's there, it's got to have some, some, some efficiency. Right. But then when I tell people, Hey, um, this indicator was created 20 years before the word swing trading was created. <laughs> it was created 20 years before the internet was created. How, mm. why are you using this stock, uh, this indicator for a stock when this indicator was created for the currency market 20 years before the word swing trading was invented. Mm. And stocks are a counter trending asset and the futures market is a trending asset. Mm -hmm. So, and I see it over and over and over and over again. And people keep doing it and they're expecting it to work, but yeah. they're using tools that were never designed, created or tested for stocks. And, and I just gave you one simple example. Mm -hmm. I can give you 30 of them. <laughs> It makes you wonder, right? Mm -hmm. So, so that's why I started Wealth Press, so people can really understand the truth. And when you start explaining it to them, their eyes start opening up. They're mm -hmm. like, "Wait a minute, you have you've got a really good point. Why am I using an indicator that was designed, tested, and created 20 years before the word swing trading stocks was created? Mm -hmm. it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. But they're but they keep doing it, and they're expecting yeah. it to work, and they expect. So, so once you strip away all this, and you kind mm -hmm. of show people like like in a real simple way like look this was created 20 years earlier why would you mm -hmm. or you show them a back test and you say look this system you're using its accuracy is is 50 percent at best which is random mm -hmm. why do you think it's going to give you an edge so yeah. when you start stripping away all this or or when you start showing them that a 20-day breakout has an accuracy of 30 percent mm -hmm. when they start seeing that and that's that's over 50 years of testing 
meanwhile, people are still recommending 20 day breakouts. It's a very common thing to do. Yeah. So, so, so when you start stripping away all this and showing people the truth, and I mean objective truth, not opinions, based on 50, 60 years of data, their mm -hmm. eyes open up. They, they change how they think. And when you explain to them that, hey, in order to make money, you need to have positive expectancy, and they don't understand mm -hmm. what the word expectancy means. And, you, and here you are telling them that you never make money unless you have positive expectancy, mm -hmm. which is basically your winners have to outpace your losers over time, you know? Yeah. And there's a for, and, and you tell them there's a formula for this. And it's and you don't have to be a, a genius. You don't have to be a PhD in math to understand it. Even if you have a fifth grade education, mm -hmm. you can understand. So when you start stripping away all the stuff that they don't understand and, and they, they start paying attention and you can actually make a big difference in their trading. And, mm. you know, I'll, I'll get a letter like, wow, Roger, I, I, I never read this before. And then when I started looking at it, mm -hmm. and it, it's it's just it's as simple as one plus one equals two. It's just yeah. simple math. It really changes how they look at the market and it changes their perspective. And we have hundreds and hundreds of letters from people thanking us mm -hmm. and telling us, look, we've never looked at the market this way again. Or, you know, now when we listen to a guy and he starts talking about an indicator that was created 30 years ago and he starts talking about how he uses it successfully for stocks, red flags, you know, so, so all these things, they're very, very positive. And I feel like, uh, I, I, I believe we're one of the fastest gaining, growing financial publishers in history. Wow. And I think yeah, and I think there's a reason for that. And I think the reason for that is because we're giving people real, usable, actionable information that they can mm -hmm. apply in their trading on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's really why I started WealthPress. So I could, I could actually have, can communicate the truth to the people mm -hmm. out there, to our clients about what really makes markets move. It's awesome, Roger. And uh, I think it's funny because any anybody watching this right now that's got their chart on to the right or something like that, they're going to be looking at that RSI a little bit different after your explanation, which is, uh, which is awesome. And it's always about questioning and just revising your process and figuring out what's going to work best for you. And, and I like the idea that you're talking about of, um, of the back testing and really going off the data here and even positive right. expectancy, everything that you, I mean, this all adds up. Um, and this also brings me to the next um, the next question, which is like what type of you mentioned, you know, you could have a fifth grade education don't have to be. I mean, sometimes people that are watching um, shows like this, they'll hear some words out there. Maybe they don't understand them. Maybe they don't know the indicator. And, you know, all these things can be intimidating. So um, just to ask you directly, like who is typically a good fit to be a member or one of the members over at Wealth Press? Like who do you find gets a lot of value out of working with you and your team? Well, to be honest with you, and, and I've, we've had this asked just about anybody who wants to make a change in their trading. I've got, mm -hmm. I've had, I have clients who've been trading for 30 years. I, one of our, one of our biggest clients, I'm not going to say, use his name, but he's a PhD in, uh, mm -hmm. he's a PhD from MIT. Uh, another one is a Mensa graduate. And then I have grandmothers who are 75 years old, who are just looking to have some fun in the stock market. It's yeah. a broad, broad range. We have clients from mm -hmm. all walks of life, all different. We have clients that have uh, millions of dollars and we have clients that start from $2,000. What's great is we have different programs to help different, different type of clients. Some of our programs are better suited for clients who have more, at, more money to, to, to trade mm -hmm. with. Some are for smaller clients. We have several programs and several uh, traders or guys that do it or teachers or yeah. However you want to call us. They call us gurus, but I've always been kind of, <laughs> that name is very kind of, I, I feel very uncomfortable with calling myself a guru. Yeah. But um, we have several instructors. We have four instructors and each of them, including myself, has several programs um, and they're designed to take advantage of different aspects of the market and mm -hmm. different account size. We have portfolio strategies and we have swing trading strategies. We have position strategy, position sizing strategies mm -hmm. and short-term strategies. So a little bit of every, a little bit, for everybody at Wealth Press. Mm. Tell me a little bit more about the content. So like the client journey of this. So somebody's going to watch this and at the end of this, I'll give you an opportunity to leave website or wherever somebody should go to learn more. Um, and they're like, okay, I, you know, I've been wanting to, you know, this makes sense. I've been wanting to maybe add to some of the things I was doing. And this is, this looks like a good route. Like tell me that about that user experience and what type of content that um, Wealth Press members can expect. Well, first of all, we do several videos per day. 
not oh, per wow. week, per day. <laughs> the day starts off. The day starts off with them getting a 14 minute video that I do two hours before the opening bell. That wow. video is, like I said, it's a 15 minute video and it's a free video. They don't have to. They can just get to it on our our YouTube channel. It gives them a full outlook of what I'm expecting. It's a very broad view of the day. I interpret all the Fed data. I tell them what to expect for the day. And every day that video has a common theme. Like on Monday, on Monday I'll give and them the week this, ahead. you do this, hold on. You do this every day? Every day at 7.30. That's amazing. Yeah. That alone every is day. amazing. Before I forget, what's the name of the, of the YouTube channel? It's amazing. Wealth Press. It's the, it's the YouTube Wealth Press channel. Just yeah. go to YouTube, yeah. type in Wealth Press. It's, in, it's, in, it's there. Go and ahead, continue. That, I just had to bring that up because that's, that's okay. not easy. Like that's a tremendous amount of, of value that you're providing, even on YouTube. <laughs> then I do an hour live with our students every day at two wow. o'clock. So then, yeah, so we do a 15 minute video. Then we do an hour live and it's all this is recorded. It's all put in the members area. And then I'll do another one or two videos that day for specific topics like two hot stocks or an industry group. So they get about an hour and a half of me live every single day. Wow. And I don't mean, and I don't mean live trades. This is not like a live trade. We don't do any, we don't do, I mean, we may talk about something, but this is not live trading. This is just market mm. analysis. So if mm. they want to learn, they could spend, they could, they could learn as much as they want to. They could start off with the morning video. They can go a little deeper. They can join one of the programs. We have some programs that start out at $7 a month. Wow. And some programs that go all the way up to thousands of dollars a year. But the point is they could start out very, very lightly, mm -hmm. dip their toe in the water. I give them profit targets in these daily videos. I give right. them sectors they should look at. And I do this every single day. And I've been told that just these videos alone mm -hmm. are just are, are amazing. And I've got tons and tons of feedback. We got thousands of people viewing them every day. Wow. So um, that's that would be the way I would start. And that's how I start my day. And yeah. I, I take, basically I take, I bring them into and, and have them look over my shoulders of how I'm looking and what I'm looking for every single morning, two hours before the opening bell. So they've got plenty of time to take action, make, decide what they want to do, how, and all this is just to get them started, just to yeah. get them in the right mood for the market. So we give them an immense amount of actionable daily information and it's all, and they can ask questions and uh, they can email me. So we're very, very accessible. We're very approachable. And we have several flexible programs for all type of traders, whether you're brand new or you've been doing this for 30 years. And I've got just as many guys who've been doing it for 30 years with PhD degrees as I've got newbies. We, we, we take them all and there's something I could teach each and every one of them. Mm. What are the um, like like what what is a time commitment for something like this? And and I'll give you where I'm going with this. So sometimes somebody will watch a video like this as well, and they're like, "Oh man, that sounds great!" Like I see, okay, yeah, you're producing these videos, you're doing this, you're doing that, but do I have the amount of time it takes? Um, because if I'm not mistaken, and you correct me, like what, as they're going through this, and it, 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 there's more, there's going to be people that are way more active, and they might even do this. They may not be, they may be full time, they may be retired, who knows? But then there's also people that are going to be working and maybe are only spending a couple hours a day or even less. Like, give me a kind of a breakdown of like expectation of what it would take to be um, to, to really engage with the platform. Well, that's that's another great question, and you're going to love the answer. Yeah. 15 minutes a day oh, wow. when the markets when the markets are closed. Mm. That's the level of commitment. Now, if you want to learn, if that's for people who want to follow along and take the yeah. trades. Now, if you want to educate yourself, I mean, the, you, I probably have 20 years worth of videos on that website. Wow. But, so, so, so education, that's a, for education, it's as much as you can handle. I mean, you got, you can be yeah. a sponge. It could take you, I've got several courses, videos, uh, mm -hmm. program. There's a millions of things out there and you can go as deep as you want to go or you could mm -hmm. go as, as slowly as you want to go. But for purposes of joining a program and just following the trades, 95% yeah. of the trades are given after the market is closed for the next day, both entries and exits. So you're never, ever, ever watching the market during the day. And I do that specifically yeah. because the worst thing you can do to a trader is have them watch the market during the day because it's I try to reward them for not watching the market because that way their emotions don't get don't go running wild. Mm -hmm. So usually my trades are given an hour or two after the opening bell and it and we we enter at the open the next day and we exit at the open the next day. 
sometimes uh, will exit at the close, but I, I, I hardly ever enter during the day. It's usually in the mm. first 15 minutes or the last 15 minutes. And uh, usually positions are, 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 I tell you ahead of time when to get out, mm -hmm. usually 12 hours in advance. So you never have to rush to your computer. This yeah. is not one of those programs. I'm, I don't believe in being rewarded by being the first to the computer. I, I'm not into that. Yeah. Like I, I know programs like that. I know that there's guys out there that they'll give a trade and it'll be a small cap and there, there's 2,000 people in the room. And by the time they all execute the trade, the stock is a $2 stock is $20. None yeah. of that with us. All our stocks are large stocks, plenty of liquidity. Uh, we don't see any movement from us. I mean, you know, Amazon, Adobe, yeah. uh, Photoshop. You're, you're not going to have any any monkey business <laughs> with those type of stocks. Yeah. So it's it's uh it, it, they're very liquid stocks. And again, uh, you got you get up to 12 hours to place the trade or get out of a trade. So there's never any rush. Mm. There's never any. Do I need to be there? Do I not need to be there? You can effectively trade 90% of all of my setups when the markets are closed. Awesome. No, that's very helpful. And I, I had to, I wanted you to compare that to some of the other things, which you did very well. Like some people have heard of, you know, you have to do exactly what you said on that small cap on that, on that type of trade or otherwise to where you're glued to the computer. And many people have tried those routes that just didn't work for them. Well, it's, um, it's, that, it's frustrating. It's frustrating yeah. when you get a good trade and you get an entry and then you see it run up and you're like, oh, if I only was run, yeah. if I was only there, I mean, come on, that, that, yeah. that's not trading. That's a competition and getting to the computer computer fast, not trading, you know? Yeah. So we don't play that game. We completely eliminate that game. There's no advantage to being first to the computer. There's, as a matter of fact, to be honest with you, the guys who are last usually get the better fills. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so there's no, like, I'm the guy that gets the worst fill. Everybody else will get a better fill than me, but that's okay. That's how it's supposed to be, right? Yeah. That, that's never an issue. And again, 15 minutes max mm -hmm. per day, per day, and sometimes only a few times a week. Yeah. So Roger, um, I just have to say, this has been great. Like learning more about Wealth Press, um, really why you do what you do, how you're helping your members. Um, I mean, it's been awesome. So that being said, I mean, so what's next? What's next for you? What's next for Wealth Press? That's a great question, Adam. And, and here's what I want people to, to take away from this. You don't need to be a PhD in math to, to, to be a successful trader. The majority of trading rules that, we, that I've applied over the last 20 years have five rules. If a, if, a, if a system has more than five rules, the odds are that it's curve fitted and it's mm -hmm. not going to work in the future like it did in the past. So you don't need to be a, a, a programming genius. This is not, we're not talking about programming 50 lines of code or yeah, anything yeah. like that. We're talking just like a, a paragraph, a couple of lines, and that's it. And these are things that you can learn very, very quickly. And even if you don't want to do all that, you could still join these programs and you could get a feel for how these algorithmic programs work. But I'm going to tell you, Adam, when people take their emotions out of the market yeah, and understand yeah. exactly when to enter and when to exit, they feel a lot more in control of their life and they feel like they actually are doing something right. So I think that for anybody who's out there who wants to delve into the future of trading, because this is the future of trading, uh, there's no better way than to get started with Wealth Press right now in what we're doing. Fantastic. And if somebody is watching this and they do want to learn more about WealthPress, um, what's the best way for them to do that? Two ways. You can either go to WealthPress.com or go to RogerScott.com, one way or the other. RogerScott.com, and my name is on the screen. You can see it there. It's uh, Scott with two Ts. Or just go to WealthPress.com, and you'll see. just put your name in the, uh, in the inbox, get a pamphlet or a booklet, or sign up for our morning videos, and start there. And Bring a pen and a paper with you so you can take some notes. <laughs> Amazing, Roger. Um, well, I just have to say it has been great having you on the show and just the a, a tremendous amount of value you're even just providing, even just on the YouTube channel. I mean, all, your testament and your body of work that you've done is the amount of videos and the quantity and just all that time. I mean, what a what a um, putting your actions forward and really showing what you're doing for your members. I mean, that's the way I like to look at it. I like to look at it as the actions um, that people take to really provide value. And we'll put, of course, the sh um, in the show notes, we'll put the website and all of that so people can easily just click on the link and get over there and because i definitely want them to check out what you're doing um well and thank you 
Absolutely. And then to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. Hope you learned a lot. If you did, don't forget, especially if you're a first time subscriber, uh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, we want you to come back, have many more mission based uh, entrepreneurs, experts and executives coming up for you. And we don't want you to miss a thing. And Roger, thanks again for coming on the show. It really has been a pleasure. Thank you, Adam. Have a great day.